Yep, the official program of the 2019 World Economic Forum on Africa kicked off this morning with President Cyril Ramaphosa addressing a Brand SA breakfast meeting in Cape Town. The pre-World Economic Forum breakfast gathering is an opportunity for Team South Africa to develop an integrated approach to the country's input into the WEF deliberations. Let's now get an update with Nzinga Kunta, who has been covering uh, the proceedings for us this entire morning. Uh, a very good morning once again. And Zinga, what's the latest? We're at the World Economic Forum where civil society, business leaders and politicians are gathered to discuss the fourth industrial revolution and shared growth and shared futures. I'm now joined by Zimbabwe's Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Professor Mtuli Mube. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News today. We know that in Zimbabwe, the sectors of agriculture and mining are the biggest drivers of growth. What challenges in particular are those two sectors facing at the moment? Well, agriculture and mining are, are big drivers, but also, also there's the services sector, there's also the to tourism sector. But just for those two, agriculture has been challenged by the, the drought, the issue of El Nino, which has impacted, impacted uh, productivity this year. But next year we expect a far better crop. But there's some crops that have done reasonably okay, such as the tobacco sector, for example, which is our largest uh, export uh, sector. And of course, agriculture is important in the sense that most of our people live on the land. Uh, so we're keen to make sure that this sector is supported and we're doing uh, that as government. Uh, in terms of the mining sector, uh, this is a roaring sector, uh, frankly, in the sense that the, the investors are not deterred by any of the negativity. They are investing. We're determined to create a 12 billion US dollar industry over the next three years or so. And we've got opportunities in the gold sector, in the platinum sector, in the uh, you know, uh, other sectors such as diamonds, for example, uh, with the ferrochrome sector, with the coal sector. Zimbabwe is easily the top 40 valuable minerals in the world and they are very easy to mine. So we're very bullish about the sector being a key driver of the economic recovery. Mm -hmm. Economic recovery, though, is not really possible if there are issues, particularly when it comes to power challenges. We're reading reports that sometimes up to 18 hours will go by in a day in Zimbabwe where there's no power. Yes, the absence of power, of energy, is an issue for our productivity and, and for everyone in the country. But the real cause of this has been the drought, which has uh, you know, uh, reduced the water levels uh, for hydropower production at, at Kariba Dam. So that's really the issue. So we have to wait for the next rainy season for that water to come up. So, so, but for the moment, we are importing power from South Africa, from Mozambique, in, in, the, in the near future. So, so, but clearly we need to deal with the power issue. For the moment, we're plugging with importation of power. But we're also accelerating investment in the solar energy sector, uh, making sure that there's investment in for solar farm. Uh, that power then is put onto the grid, and we are improving that. But also individual households, those who can afford it, of course, are investing in solar power in their, in their homes to make sure that they are not, never out of power. But for companies that then have to use uh, diesel generators or, or, or electrical generators, then becomes very expensive power uh, indeed. But we are dealing with the power sector. Okay. When you speak about e economic recovery, we know that fiscal deficit is estimated to be about 10.7% of GDP. What factors? And what fiscal consolidation measures are you as Zimbabwe trying to put into place? Yes, indeed. In 2018, the fiscal deficit was double digit, uh, just above 10% of to GDP. Uh, but th that's the past now. Things have changed. In the, since January uh, uh, to the last eight months, we've run a surplus every month. So there's been very uh, strong fiscal consolidation measures under the theme of austerity for prosperity, which really is targeted at government to make sure that we can live within our means. We're doing that. Uh, we've right-sized the, the, the civil service, we've cut down on government waste, but also we've expanded the tax net by introducing an electronic uh, uh, transactions tax of 2%, but also we're more tax efficient uh, in, our, in, our, in our behavior as, 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 as Zimbabweans in terms of collecting those taxes. Our government of SARS or Zimra is, is, is very effective at collecting uh, taxes. So that is assist us, us with uh, the fiscal consolidation. We've also shut down the use of the uh, uh, borrowing window at the central bank, the overdraft view window is government. And uh, we're not borrowing anymore because we have enough resources as government to finance government uh, programs and have con converted the overdraft facility into long-term dated instrument, which, which is also very good because then we can develop a, a bond market going forward. So things have gone very well on the fiscal consolidation front. When you say things have gone very well, there's still a lot of challenges on the ground that 
citizens in Zimbabwe complain about. I know the fuel shortages and the access to things like that is still a major complaint. When are citizens going to feel the effects of consolidation of an economic recovery and the like on the ground? Of uh, uh, fuel shortage, of uh, currency issues and inflation issues, a monetary sector phenomenon in the sense that at the end of the day, all inflation is, is nothing other than a monetary factor. So again, we're making progress on that in the sense that we introduced a new currency, a domestic currency, which is the sole legal tender within the Zimbabwe dollar. Currencies are foreign currencies, and that's what it should be. In any country, it should be like that. You should be able to come into a country and buy some, anything from any domestic currency, uh, if you're carrying a foreign currency. We've, we've done that. And, what, uh, the, and introduce an interbank market with a floating exchange rate. Uh, and, and what we, that, that we'll do in the end is make sure that the foreign currency is available for fuel uh, importation, uh, for, 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 for us to also build reserve over time. We're also going to, going to build reserve to support the currency over time. So the monetary system is, is, is being reformed and has been reformed to deal with those challenges that pertain to foreign currency and the fuel challenges in terms mm. of supply. And then, and then the, the trickling down of that and the effects, do you have a timeline where you say by X amount of time these challenges should be resolved and it will be easier for day-to-day -day functioning to work? So basically all the major macroeconomic decisions uh, for economic reform agenda will be completed during 2019. In 2020, we'll focus on the productive sector, uh, on manufacturing, supporting agriculture, mining, uh, tourism, investment in infrastructure to create jobs. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're working on that to just to switch completely from the macro to the micro. So that will be our focus in uh, 2020 going forward uh, towards uh, 2023 and then uh, 2030. But of course the response of the economy usually takes longer. There's often an 18 month lag in terms of uh, uh, economic response to economy, a certain economic policy. So citizens should be patient. Uh, we're on a reform agenda. The, the economy is in transition. We will get there. Okay. When you raise the issue of jobs, about 36% of people in Zimbabwe are young people. And there's a challenge, like most in most parts of sub-Saharan Africa, of getting those people employed. How does coming to WEF and uh, having the agenda around the fourth industrial revolution give you as Zimbabwe ideas in order to create new ways of working perhaps that haven't been thought of in the traditional industries that we've spoken about. You're right, the opportunity of the fourth industrial revolution uh, really requires us to think differently, uh, th uh, outside the box, if not throw away the box in fact. So, so using ICT as a way of, of plugging with the, the workplace is really the way to go. Uh, capacitating the young people to, to drive a knowledge-based economy that is based on, on, on ICT. And those who are, who are good at coding, they're really good at coding, and we have lots of Zimbabweans who are good. So it's a matter of supporting their ideas in launching uh, different technologies in the ICT space. So through, so through uh, uh, incubators, through entrepreneurship support, through mentoring uh, uh, you know, programs, as well as venture funds for investment in their ideas. So we're looking into that, so making sure that they're not just you know, looking for jobs, they're not just job ready, but also their entrepreneurship ready and we support their ideas. That's what we're going to take away from this WEF. If, if we're talking about implementing that kind of knowledge and what you're going to take back to WEF, another one of the challenges when we speak about power is the telecommunications industry in Zimbabwe facing particular challenges now related to um, that power supply. So how have you been dealing with that? Oh, the, the Zimbabwe telecom sector is very innovative. So, for example, I know that some of the companies are now, you know, powering their base stations and other infrastructure using, uh, you know, uh, batteries, for example, from companies such as Tesla. They're also using uh, solar power to power different, uh, different and various types of infrastructure within their industry. So they're very innovative and they're moving forward. You, you will not be surprised even to hear that Zimbabwe is going to, you know, incentivize the usage of electric cars uh, beyond telecoms. Because why? Because we want to deal with the energy issue and we know in the supply of electricity as well as, 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 as petrol and diesel. Mm -hmm. We, we know now, but we're not insulated completely from what's happening outside um, of these halls in this forum. If we look to our right, there are protests that are taking place. We know that Zimbabwe has also seen protests from the opposition uh, leaders. So let's start talking about what's happening in South Africa and then we'll move to Zimbabwe. 
There have been uh, Afrophobic or xenophobic attacks that have taken place. Um, what is your response to that? And, and have you had any communications with um, your peers in South Africa around what's happening there? Well, well of course, I mean, the, the, I guess two things. One is that we uh, are embracing to, to its brothers and sisters uh, in the rest of the continent. Uh, we're one Africa, we have an Africa continental the area that we're all expiring to, to make work and create one market. So in that spirit, they, we should all embrace each other. But secondly, we are aware that the authorities have said there's a lot of criminality and that criminality should be dealt with through the rule of law and I'm, I'm certain that the authorities will, will, will deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the protests in Zimbabwe, we saw particularly about two weeks ago them flaring up over government policies and alleged human rights violation and the like. How do you deal with that? in a manner that is democratic, constitutional, and, and ensures that everyone is involved in what happens in your country and making their voice heard without being challenged in, in, in a way that's uh, unfair or illegal. Oh, Zimbabwe is a democratic country, and the, the right to protest is allowed, but there is a process uh, to the right to protest, and which is governed by the rule of law. And obviously, in situations where it is deemed that it is not within the law, then the law takes its course and so forth. No one, the government has never acted outside the law, uh, law, law abiding citizens. So, uh, but at the same time, there's a right to protest. Zimbabwe is a democratic country. And in fact, what you see in Zimbabwe is an expression of that democracy. It's very noisy, but that's what democracy means. I, mean, I sit in parliament sometimes and we think we're all crazy. The noise, the hackling, the finger pointing, but that's what democracy means, and we, we fully embrace that. Zimbabwe's Finance Minister, Professor Mtuli, who were joining us here at the World Economic Forum. For now, it's back to you in studio.